Hi, I'm Jamie from Printworks. It's great to be here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a whimsical photo greeting card that you can share all of your winter adventures with your friends. The way I like to work is I'd like to start out by getting everything a little organized. I'm a simple creature and if things aren't where I think they're gonna be, I get lost. So I've separated my elements and I have a couple of things that are gonna take some time to dry. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a stamping guide. I'm just gonna take a blank sheet of paper and my black pen and I'm gonna make a four and a half inch straight line and I'm gonna mark the center of that straight line and I'm gonna go ahead and make two even dots on the outside of my line as well. Now I'm gonna take an acetate sheet and I'm gonna lay it over the stamping guide that I just made and I'm gonna bring in a little bit of an acrylic white paint and I'm just gonna put a dab on my palette. And I'm going to just thin out my paint enough that I have a nice even stamping surface. Then using my snowflake stamp, I'm going to pick up just a little bit of the paint and using the guidelines that I just put down on my card, I'm going to stamp my snowflakes. Repeat this twice each time coming back and thinning my paint out again. And using just the edge of my brush, I'm just going to dab right along the outside of my acetate sheet. But I'm just gonna set it aside to dry now. This is one of our acid-free chunky tags. It has two sides, a glossy side and a matte side. And I'm gonna start with the matte side. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a 3 8 inch score at the bottom of my card using a burnishing tool. And this is gonna be for later when you attach it. It'll give me a little bit of a flap to fix my adhesive to. Printworks has designed an outliner pad specifically for the watercoloring technique that you're about to see. If you think of your project as a coloring book, these are gonna be your lines. Without heat setting or embossing, the lines won't bleed or smear into your colors, even if you're using a real pale yellow over your black lines. I'm using the Love in Your Heart Snowman stamp from Printworks Collection. I really like this stamp because it has a nice whimsical image that focuses your card but there's still enough saying around it to kind of tie in the whole theme together. And I'm gonna set it off just a little bit. I like to kind of set things at angles because I'm not real good at getting things exactly straight. Because I already have my stamping stuff out and I'm trying to be organized, I'm gonna use this same outliner pad. I'm gonna bring in a sheet of frost white text weight vellum paper and I'm gonna use my friend define stamp. And again, because this is a vellum paper, it's gonna take a little longer for it to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that and also set it aside. Now that I've finished with my lightweight vellum, I'm gonna bring in a cardstock weight vellum using a different kind of rubber stamp. These are a photopolymer stamp. And just using static cling, like plastic wrap in your kitchen, it's just gonna to adhere to the block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring in one of our designer ink spots. This is the same as a regular full-size pad. And what I'm gonna do is use an X-Acto knife. I'm just gonna split the label and that's gonna hinge my lid so I can keep track of my lid and keep everything organized again. And using my love stamp, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna put three repeating loves that kind of overlap, and this is gonna become the image within the tag that I'm about to do. And you'll notice that I don't have to re-ink every single time. The ink will go a little ways. And I'm gonna use a tag-shaped hole punch, and I'm gonna punch out a tag that's gonna have those three loves already stamped on it. Another element for my card is I need to create a couple of buttons. With that same stamp and using that same green pad, I'm going to bring in a piece of apple green cardstock. This is a textured cardstock. And I'm gonna stamp my love. And I'm also gonna use a monogram letter F and do the same thing. Now again, just like we did before, I'm gonna use a punch and I'm gonna go ahead and punch these out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a makeup sponge. Now makeup sponges come as a wheel, and what I'm gonna do is cut them into quarters. It makes them a little easier to use. It gives me two flat edges to hold with my fingers, and it makes the top nice and round so I don't get any repeating patterns. Dab just a little bit of ink, and then holding my button in my hand, I'm just gonna brush down and away from the edges to just kinda tie those two together. And then one last time, I'm just gonna touch the centers, and I'm gonna do that to both of my buttons. And I'm gonna clean up my area a little bit, because again, Organization, kind of my thing. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually watercolor this card, just like you probably did when you were in elementary school, but I'm gonna watercolor using my stamp pads. So I'm gonna take my ink spots and I'm gonna push it down on my palette and I'm just gonna give it a little twist. That's gonna transfer some of the ink so that you'll have a place to pick it up from. 
Now using a watercolor brush and just plain water, I'm gonna get my brush wet, pick up a little bit of ink by creating a puddle here in the corner. Now there's a little bit of a, of a tip that I'm gonna share with you for watercoloring with your inks. Unlike the paints that you may have used before, where you could lift up color if something was too dark, with your inks it's pretty much set on the paper. So what you're gonna wanna do is start off very, very light and start adding color until you get to the darker colors you want. And again, I'm just gonna keep brushing in with my tones. There's a couple of different ways to control the colors that you're using, and you can do that by the amount of water that you use. If I take my paper towel and blot off all of the water, except for a very little bit, then I can come in and actually add darker overtones that are gonna make my picture just pop. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that with all of my colors. And again, this is a lot like playing with watercolor paints. It takes a little bit of practice, and the two big things are remembering to start light and remembering not to crush the tip of your brush so that you actually have a point you can paint with. For my final color, I'm gonna do something just a little bit different. To show you that this technique will work also with your full-size pads, I'm gonna show you a little tip. Instead of using your palette, you're gonna squeeze the lid with both thumbs, and when you open your pad, you're gonna have a little bit of ink up here in the lid. I know we've all done that before and we've all looked at those pads at home and thought, wow, what a mess I've made. You really haven't. What you've done is you've created yourself a palette right there in the lid of your pad. So again, thinning it down with water, I'm gonna pick up a little blue, and I'm gonna fill in the outside of the frame around my snowman. Because I want the highlights to just kinda of jump him off the page and add a little bit of depth, I'm gonna take off my water, pick up just a little bit of color, and I'm just gonna brush that right along the outside of the frame again to make a real bright spot where he's just gonna kinda jump out. And another technique too, I'm coloring a snowman. Obviously he's gonna be white, and I could use that acrylic paint, but it's not gonna show on a white card. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a real pale wash, and I'm just gonna do in the shadows around his face to give him a little bit of depth. And now I've completed the water coloring that I wanna do on my card. Now that I've made all my elements, what I'm gonna do is assemble my card. It's gonna start out with an A2 violet greeting card and I have that same apple green paper that we used a little earlier in the project. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach this card using my Judikins Trio adhesive transfer. I really like this, this is a great tool. And the reason that I really like it is I can be as sloppy as I want. And when I go and I press it down on my card with my big fat fingers, I'm not gonna worry about glue seeping out all over my project. And I'm gonna bring in this sheet of acetate. There's a couple of different ways that you can mount this, so I'm gonna show you a couple that I did. So back at home, when I had access to a sewing machine, yes, I own a sewing machine, I took a binder clip and attached my acetate to my card, and then I just ran a simple zigzag stitch using white thread to attach it to the card. It's a little awkward to have a sewing machine here on the desk, so I'm gonna show you another way you can do it using a simple 16th inch hole punch. I'm just gonna punch the center of those snowflakes all the way through that side of the card, and then using a brad, I'm gonna mount that center of the snowflake and then you have your acetate attached. It won't have the little zigzag, but it's still pretty cool. The next step is I'm actually gonna bring in the circle that we punched out before and bringing in my 16th inch hole punch. I'm gonna go through both the citrus card and the vellum. And then using a brad, I'm gonna mount these two pieces together. I put another piece of trio on the back of this little button and what I'm gonna do is it's going to become the F that I cut off from my definition. So I'm gonna bring my tag back in that I've already watercolored and my trio. And I'm just gonna put a piece on that flap that we created at the beginning by scoring that 3 eighths of an inch. And I'm gonna mount it to my card. Straight is bad. We're going to kind of go at an angle so that nobody knows that your eyes are crooked. And you'll notice on my tag that I've added a couple of embellishments. I've tied a ribbon through the loop in the end and I've added that vellum tag that we punched out earlier and stamped the love on. And that's gonna complete the outside of our card. What I've done to finish the inside of my card and hide where that stitch is and the hardware from the brads is I've lined one side, given myself a place to journal, and on the other side, I've mounted a picture. You notice I'm not in a picture? Not only am I crafty, I'm the guy behind the camera too most of the time. Now I gotta think about a way to send it to somebody. What I have is a commercial envelope, and that's kind of boring, even with my little button added to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it using the same lining that I used on the inside of my card to kind of tie the whole thing together. And I'm gonna use my envelope as a template. I'm gonna line it up even in the corners so it's nice and flat. And then I'm gonna move it down so there's about an eighth of an inch hanging off of the edge. You're just gonna trace around the outside to give you a shape for the lining. 
So now that you've got that all cut out, you're just going to feed it in, just like you're replacing it inside the envelope. And you'll notice, because of that eighth of an inch that we cut off, that the adhesive on the top of your envelope is still going to show. I'm going to come across the flap, and I'm just going to fold the lining down. And then again, using my trio, I'm just going to apply adhesive along the very top edge of my flap. And then when I fold it back up to where the adhesive is, I have a lined envelope. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in that love button that we have left over from our project, and I'm going to use it to seal it all off. I hope you had a really good time. This was a blast for me. Thanks. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.